In this video, we're going to take a look at how to recreate the effect that the guys at Intagma have done using geometry with Python and Cinema 4D to create this plexus style effect. And they've also shown you how to do it in Houdini using Vex. We're going to put it together using X particles and Cinema 4D. This is the end result. So you can see we've created the same sort of effect with the plexus creating geometry and we'll go over a little bit of the lighting as well. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just create the effect and go over how the effect's being built and we'll start with just using simple geometry like a sphere and you can leave the sphere at default. I kind of like using the icosahedron it makes no difference though because we're just going to be sampling the surface and you can hide this for now because we don't really need to see it at all so we're going to go to X particles we'll get a system object and we'll create an emitter and with the emitter we're going to change the emitter shape to object and use the sphere as our object we're going to change the emit from from polygon center because we don't want a particle on every single polygon center we're just going to use polygon area and then we're going to go to the emissions tab and we're going to change the emission mode to shot because we want them to happen on one frame and then we're going to reduce the speed to zero so if you put go up one frame you're going to get this group of particles on the surface of the sphere okay so let's just hide our icon because we don't need to see that now the next thing we want to do is we want to generate the splines between these and all you need to do is get the generator trail object drop your emitter into the trail object link and then change the algorithm from no connections to nearest by distance and that means it's going to look for a particle within the distance of each other and create a segment a spline segment between them now you have more options than that so that you can actually fill it out if you change the distance mode from nearest only to maximum number within distance you can see it's going to create a much more varied mesh or group of splines so you can control the distance between the particles and the maximum number of generated splines so we can drop this down and increase this to get more varied detail to get the sort of effect that you're looking for so you can see how quickly and easy it is to just generate the splines it's nice and fast and it's fully procedural you can change everything on the fly you can add modifiers so that they move around or you can keep it as a static object like we're going to do in this tutorial the other thing we want to look at is if you wanted them to start growing rather than just being a one frame created geometry you can go back to your emitter and change the shot back down to rate and change the rate to a really no no number like 10 let's get a bit more time on our timeline and then they'll start generating them as soon as the particles start getting closer to each other you can see that the splines are slowly appearing and depending on the amount of particles that you emit is how fast this effect is going to happen. So if we say something like 100 particles a second, it would build up the shape a lot faster. So you can see it almost looks like a star map being joined together. And it will get more and more detailed as you go along. And you can also, if you don't want to have this hollow shell, you can look at going into your emitter. Let's just go back to this single shot go back to how it's emitted instead of from polygon area you can look at either using a voxel grid or the object's volume so if we look at the volume go up one frame you can see you're now creating the geometry within the volume of the mesh 
and that just gives you another dimension of shapes and effects that you can get with this whole style so once you've got the splines generated the next thing you do is you want to actually create some geometry around them and rather than using the uh, Maxon Cinema 4D sweep object which is good but it will be a lot heavier to use you can use the X particle spline mesher so grab the spline mesher from the generators menu turn off joins because we don't need them to be joined and simply drop the trail object in the link and then you can change the scale down so let's say 0.2 you can see really quickly we've created this geometry we've got this cool mesh if you don't want it to be squares because at the moment the profile is just four points just subdivide it once let it calculate and then you've got little tubes so again it gives you the control over what sort of shape you want and what you're looking for is exactly like this so moving on and let's have a look at actually how, how to set up a full scene I'm going to just copy the system since we've already got it set up and this is the geometry we're going to use and these are just found online and then I've run them through the polygon reduction deformer a couple of times because you don't need a lot of geometry you all you need is the shape or the volume so we're going to go down, we're going to get our emitter, drop in the puck model, I'm going to hide that. And again, I'm going to go back to surface rather than volume. So object polygon area. Let's have a look, got one frame. Let's turn off the spline measure for now because it's take a bit of time to generate. So that's cool. That's exactly what we want might tweak the trails so there's not quite so many connections just to loosen it up a bit but you can see how fast it is just to to define the shape and the style of the spline connections it's a bit hollow in his chest here so I'm just going to add a couple more points in there so then we can create our mesh so let it calculate that okay see how quickly that did and you can see we've got our cool plexus style mesh and we're ready to start working on the actual scene so rather than keeping it live like we've got now to keep it procedural just to help speed things up I'm going to copy this make it editable hitting C on the keyboard and then I can turn off this whole system which turns everything off and we'll just speed the workflow up because we don't need we're not animating anything we just need it to be uh, the mesh that we've got here so let's go and change our X uh, our uh, settings I'm going to use HD just to get a nice 16 by 9 aspect ratio <coughs> and when we're looking at the scene and the lighting these guys don't have a lot of texture on them if we look at our render it's mostly done with lights so that's what we have a look at setting up now so we're going to get a basic material so a new material I'm going to keep it relatively white I'm going to the reflectance specular and just boost that up a bit sharpen it as well just want to get some a little bit of specular in there so it can give it some highlights drop that on our mesh and then let's start working with some lights so I'm going to get a single light go into details change the fall off to inverse square which is really bright so we're going to scale it down a little bit so and the first color we'll work on is the sort of off yellow so we go into our general tab and we'll just get a sort of off yellow color going on there we we'll put some area shadows in there as well And then I'm going to 
copy this guy and we'll put in the bluey green color we want to give this give them a few highlights on their face area so put one here and make sure your z-axis of the lights pointing at the mesh for your shadows another one so, just have a quick render see how that looks just to see if it's getting the colors okay and you see these do take a little while to render because there's a lot of intersecting geometry going on in here okay that's good don't need to keep going with that so there's our lights and we're going to actually use the physical render so just get a camera okay your render settings we're going to use physical and the physical going to change the sampling now it's probably the sampler to adaptive progressive and no, adaptive and automatic sampling quality 20 for now let's turn on depth of field and that means we need a target object for the camera so just create an object call it target or we'll focus and drop that in the focus object link So now the camera, if we look from above, is always going to be where focused on where this null is. And we want the null to be in the front guy's head, like so, because that's the main area of focus for the shot. Okay, and then we can sort of frame up a nice shot, and you can do, you know, a nice sweeping camera move like that. So then we need a background as well, so we go and create a new material, colour, and then we're just going to use a gradient, and we'll use a nice soft blue, grey colour, side, and then a lighter one on this side. That, and that needs to go on a background object don't want any reflectant either so drop that on there okay. camera let's go into the physical change the focus let's try 0.2 might be too extreme but we'll see how it renders and then lastly we want some ambient occlusion in there just to give it some depth and darkness inside of the characters Okay, so that's way too extreme, which is good because we want it to be a bit more physical. So 1.1 might be good. Still a bit too strong, but it's not too bad. So you're getting to see the, uh, the style that you get this front one's in focus and you get the nice dark areas inside with the ambient inclusion and the uh, area shadows defocus background cool looking geometry going on in here tweak the lighting slightly <clears throat> need to pull back this green one a bit further so that you get more of the yellow in the back areas that's the general idea so let's have a last look at the final result and we're good to go